How do you explain a complex process? If you can do this, you can begin to write with analytic rigor. So let's take it step by step. Previously, we've mastered the art of showing action. It's very simple, really. You just describe moment by moment what happens in a limited period of time. That period could be minutes or hours or even days. As long as you're describing the same process, you should be fine. The key is to get specific. Describe who does what clearly. Provide the details that surprise the details that the reader probably hasn't noticed already, and move the whole thing forward with beats, with the moments that matter. To describe action, you need to get the sequence right. Let's suppose we wanted to design a great city park. These tiles indicate all the essential steps. Pause the video to look them over. Of course, it's not enough to know all the right steps. You have to put them in the right order. So, what order would you put these actions? Again, pause the video to think it through. Describing action requires patience, diligence, and skill. You need to know the journey. You need to know the starting and ending points. You need to gather details and create a sequence. Before you're finished, you have to get rid of the details that don't add anything to your description. In other words, you have to murder your darlings. Describing action requires a singular focus. You observe the actions moment by moment. You do not allow your attention to wander away. Describing a complex process involves looking at the action from different perspectives. You need to account for a number of different activities, but still keep your eye on the subject you want to explain. Think of a complex process as a machine. The Austrian philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein offers this insight about complex processes. Pause the video to read it over. Now, Wittgenstein is saying that no thing can be understood apart from other things. Even the simplest ideas are connected to other ideas. Wittgenstein uses the term language games to refer to the cluster of related ideas that make up the larger whole. Look at this abbreviated description of how an internal combustion engine works. Start with the overview, then move to the separate parts and processes. To explain this in detail, break out of the big picture to isolate separate processes. Move step by step, but always make clear what part of the machine you're looking at. And of course, you're going to have to break away from the overall machine to make sense of any of the parts. I like to think of this explanation as a collection of vectors which operate separately but also interdependently. To explain and analyze most social phenomena, including urban planning, we often look to a set of big variables like demographics, capitalism, culture and values, psychology, and bureaucracy. We could add other ideas, but let's just stick with these for now. And once you identify these variables, you can start to look for information about them. Either observations about particular people doing particular things at particular times, or more general information that tracks how these things work, not just in one place, but in a variety of places. Now, to describe a complex process, I just want you to pick three of these variables or processes or vectors. Pick the ones where you can gather lots of information, where you can track the process. Warning, don't try to be comprehensive, not yet. Just give the reader a vision of how a few pieces operate separately and eventually together. 
If we want to describe Bryant Park, for example, we might focus on demographics, psychology, and bureaucracy. Now, ask yourself, how do these factors play out in the park's design or maintenance or use? Now, just pick one of these focus, one of these focuses, one of these foci. Don't try to explain everything. Along the way, we might try to note how other processes cross over. Also, when you need to define a term, do so when the reader needs to understand that concept and do it as fast as possible, and then get back to business. Always remember, one, take the reader on a clear journey. Two, start strong, finish strong. Three, identify the variables or the vectors you want to highlight, the ones that you want to describe. Four, use the details that show the reader step by step. Five, look for telling and surprising details. We'll leave the last word to the man who needs no introduction. Everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler.